Hey there! Welcome into this uh, new video in which I'm going to explain to you how I did my latest illustration, The Lost Fairy. So, these past few weeks I really uh, tried to develop a more systematical and uh, efficient way to practice art in general. And what I discovered mainly by watching videos of people like uh, Jeff Watts, so uh, I really rec recommend you to go watch his YouTube uh, channel. He is saying a lot of really interesting say, but, uh, things, but um, mainly what I discovered is from a, s a beginner standpoint, it's good to try to follow the line, values, colors, uh, methodology, I guess. I can say this. I am sorry in advance if I don't know how to engli English properly, but uh, uh, it's not always really easy. So uh, what is said by Jeff Watts and people like him is that if you are a beginner, following that uh, those, those steps in that particular order is a good thing because each one of these uh, different uh, aspects of a drawing, so line, values and colors, are going to force you to observe and to take care and to notice things differently. For example, when I'm working with line art, I'm going to focus on perspective, uh, shapes, um, design, etc. while value is going to be more about uh, volumes, shadows, light. So if you don't know how to make a proper line art, what's going to happen is, is you, you are going to miss different things you need to learn, some basic things that you need in order to make a correct value work. And at the end, uh, your color work too needs a correct value work in order to be, correct, to be more correct. So, as I said, I'm making my line art and I'm starting with the simple things, uh, simple shapes and progressively adding details and, don't, and I, I don't hesitate to modify uh, things when I'm in the line art stage. I think it's uh, at that moment when it's easier to uh, have control over uh, your drawing and to modify details, uh, modify the shapes, uh, the design and adding stuff or deleting uh, things, etc. Once I'm uh, satisfied with the uh, line art, I'm uh, adding a first pass of shadow um, with uh, two values. Uh, this allow me, as I said, uh, and I'm going to repeat it, repeat it, is to keep control of things. So starting with a simple uh, thing and then going more into detail afterward. So once I'm satisfied with uh, the two, uh, two value shadow, I'm uh, adding more um, intermediate values and uh, you know trying to go deeper and deeper into contrasts to going uh, adding more black and more white or values that uh, are going to be uh, blackest and uh, lightest um, and th this is really the moment when I'm trying to figure out the mood of the drawing so you can see me testing stuff uh, I'm thinking about where is going to be my main light and where is going to be my second light. It's uh, always like that. I think about two, two different lights. So a first main light is going to bright from a side and then I'm going to add another light, uh, usually at an uh, opposed angle to try to push, uh, to push the details and to show a little bit of what's going on into the, um, the shadows to have a more uh, I think it's more dynamic like this. Some, something I will recommend is not to be afraid to add the contrast, really go dark and white. But keep in mind that contrast is... It's better to keep highest values of contrast for your points of interest, especially white. So in this drawing, I have not that much white. I really try to, to keep pure white for really bright areas and uh, for the points of interest because the eyes, the uh, human eye is more uh, attracted to, to white and to light so remind this when you're drawing is that the, the things you are going to light are going to be the most visible, uh, seeable and interesting things the viewers are going to watch first Oh boy, oh boy it's starting to become interesting, isn't it? So, uh, after a certain time of adding details in values, I'm, uh, and when I'm, basically when I'm feel confident in my values, uh, I start to think about the colors. 
and uh, as you will see soon, uh, for the colors I'll start with a, a, th a simple uh, pass of um, gradient maps. So I use different layers of gradient maps, one for each different element. So for example, the skin, uh, the cloth, and the the inside fi the inside firelight, and uh, the fairy. And I'm really testing stuff out, so I don't have a precise idea of the colors. I have mainly some uh, basi basic ideas, such as, you know, I want uh, the fairy to be more bluish, I want the fire to be more reddish, I want the creature to be a little bit like... Uh, skin-like type of colors. So I'm really testing, uh, testing things out, and I don't try to pass too much time on uh, gradient maps because I know that it's going to be heavily modified um, while I'm going to progress in uh, the making of the drawing. So you can see here I'm, I'm applying the, as I say, the first uh, line, the first, uh, it's not line, because lines are done a long time ago, but uh, as I can speak English I'm always making mistakes like this. So um, I'm applying the first uh, colors. And they, there is a lot of things wrong at first, so I'm going to modify everything again and again. And uh, something I discovered while watching a video of Dave Rapodza. Rapodza? I'm going to call him Dave, it's going to be easier like this. So Dave um, told us, tell us in one of his videos, that you can also play with saturation in order to have more realistic look, but also to try to guide, uh, uh, you know, to, to guide the the look of the viewer, as we are also more uh, interested in saturated zones. So the more saturated a zone is, the more likely it is to um, attract uh, our sight. And that's ac actually something I, I applied, because at first I was a, a little bit uh, skeptical with my uh, colors. I was wondering, you know, it doesn't look really right, it was too bright, too, too vibrant. So I simply added the desaturation layer, and uh, with uh, a mask, I tried to desaturate it some places, tried to saturate it a little bit more other places, and uh, it worked. Another thing I made a lot uh, while working on, the, on this piece was to use another layer to uh, rework uh, shadows and lights. And that's why you have those modification of tints at some places. I think it's uh, particularly visible around the neck of the creature, when you have that uh, smooth modification of colors uh, which are at more yellow where the light falls and then progressively the more you go into the shadows the more it becomes reddish, you know. I think it's a really nice effect and in fact this was an accident so I didn't really knew it was going to be like this. I was really testing stuff with a novel layer and it just uh, happened so it's kind of a happy accident. You can see I'm struggling with uh, that hand, which uh, caused me problem from the start of the drawing to the finish of it. So there's always uh, a little things which which cause more problem than other others, and for me, in this drawing, it was that little uh, fucking hand. I'm going to keep on adding details. Um, most of the design is done, so I'm not going to change big things, even though I'm not afraid to do it if necessary. But here I'm confident about what I have, so I'm really... The only thing I'm doing is just keep on adding uh, details, trying to make the rendering more and more uh, realistic. Modifying uh, one or two things, you know, trying to work on the colors and light, and basically a little bit of details here and there. I'm also uh, taking the time here to thank the people of uh, the Facebook group uh, Draw or Die, which uh, give me some, gave me some tips uh, on the anatomy of the fairy. I wasn't really satisfied of it, so I went to the group and, uh, hey, uh, can someone help me, help me here, and blah, 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 and someone was kind enough and answered to me, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's always good. Here it's going to be mainly rendering face, so the funniest and yet longest part when you simply add details over details over details. That way you can see me moving around a lot. 
I'm more, most of the time I work a little bit somewhere, then I move or, or elsewhere, and um, I keep on I keep on trying to make things as realistic as I can, and uh, so I'm going to let you watch that until I pass to the next phase, which is going to be adding some effects. A little note is about uh, those uh, cubed uh, things. Uh, at first I, s I started to work with um, a soft brush, but it didn't really work out, so I tried a hard brush with a, with a texture. And it really allowed me to, to have that metallic uh, aspect really quickly. So I'm not, w I'm not going to say that uh, brushes are going to help you or making your drawing easier. But uh, actually, if you know how to use brush, if you know how to play with uh, the settings, it's uh, definitely it definitely can help you. So it's not uh, the most important thing ever, and it's not uh, the thing that is going to allow you to do the drawing, so you don't need it, but uh, sometimes it can really come in handy. So as I'm going to soon finish the rendering, I'm going to do the effects and I'm taking a little bit of time to say that uh, effect is like a, a really fun thing to do, you know, it's dust, uh, particles, uh, some rays or whatever. And uh, basically it doesn't really ask, well, at least for me, it doesn't ask a lot of uh, painting skill, but I try to keep it subtle, not to make too much, you know to try to, to add it like a little bit of a touch which makes things cooler without um, taking away the nature of the drawing and making too much of it. So here is the final piece, finally. I uh, really hope this video helped you, that you uh, learned maybe some inter interesting things. Don't hesitate to tell me what you thought of it. Uh, don't, uh, you know, don't hesitate to let a comment, to ask me questions. If you like the video, like it, you can share it, you can subscribe if you want to, to, uh, to see uh, other videos like, uh, like this one. I also made some uh, animated uh, work uh, for school mainly. And again, I, re I sincerely apologize for my English skill, but it's also why I'm doing this video is to try to improve my English talking ability. So thanks a lot and uh, have a nice day. Cheers!